Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. I want to talk about a doctrinal issue which can avoid a, uh, a lot of pain. It can avoid uh, a spiritual ruin. Uh, it can uh, bypass that whole area of confusion and discontentment and frustration and seeming failure and well a whole lot of other things um, it is uh, I believe the cause of much Christian disappointment and despair uh, it's a hard lesson to learn but it brings a lot of joy and peace and contentment so that's what we're going to talk about tonight You know, it was back in 1987, uh, 80, 88, I believe, that I first tried to publish my first book. It was, I co-authored it with another brother in the Lord. It was called The Blind Side of the Cross. It's now out of print. Uh, it, was, it dealt with uh, potential solutions concerning the despondent Christian life. It, heavily, it dealt heavily with the subject of law and grace and how the Lord works in our lives in that regard. Uh, the solution for most of uh, all Christian despondency uh, is or can be like most medicines are hard to swallow hard to take and what I'm talking about here is no expectations uh, I, I could have titled this video no expectations uh, probably would have been a lot more concise title, uh, short to the point. Uh, but it, it does need some clarifying. Because when we talk about having no expectations, it sure seems like, to most people at least, that, that there are some things that we should have expectations about. So I want to talk about no expectations, spiritually speaking. But then maybe it just might be possible that that carries over into areas which we wouldn't consider to be spiritual you know natural common everyday ordinary you know circumstances and experiences which really don't have anything to do with anything spiritual and i have a little difficult a difficulty with that concept folks because now we're separating part of our lives from Christ and we're saying, well, you know, there's this there's area of our lives which have to do with the Lord and there's areas of our lives which don't and I don't think that jives with Scripture. And that makes that medicine even more hard to take. Now, there are things which we naturally expect, it seems, uh, I expect my boss to pay me if I'm employed and I have a job. I expect, uh, you know, uh, contracts to be fulfilled. I expect, uh, uh, I expect freedom. You know, I expect fairness and justice and equal opportunity. I expect understanding, appreciation and love, especially from uh, my family, uh, a spouse. Uh, uh, I expect uh, loyalty from my friends and. The list goes on. I expect the sun to come out tomorrow. 
the list is endless. Are, are we not to have some expectations? Is there some place in our lives, is there any room in our lives for expectations? Are there expectations that we are entitled to? Uh, I'm going to suggest, and it, as unpopular as it may be, that we're to have no expectations, zero, not a, uh, none. Uh, if I could say none, nothing, not a, if, if I could say that in every human language, I think that's the extent of it. Oh, but Steve, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, it goes against logic, Steve. It goes against reason. Well, of course it does, because we're talking about Christianity. And there's a whole lot of things about Christianity that don't seem to make any sense at all. It seems to go against logic, and it seems to go against reason. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out here with uh, yourself, ourselves, you, me, you know, to have expectations of ourselves. We're walking with the Lord. We're uh, identifying ourselves as Christians. And so we have to have some expectations of ourselves. Surely God expects us to have some expectations of ourselves. Or we're to have some expectations of him, but we're not, I haven't gotten to him yet. I'm still talking about us. No expectations of ourselves. That's in life. I believe it's especially when it comes to service, Christian service. No expectations. No expectations in life, and when I say that, that cover, seems to cover a whole lot of bases, a whole lot of areas. No expectations of others. We're not to have any expectations of others. I'm not to have any expectations of you. You're not to have any expectations of me. Oh, but Steve, sure, I mean, come on. There's got to be some room, some place, some, some area in which God is pleased with us having expectations. Well, there is, and I'll get to that in a minute. But how about in marriage? Boy, that's a tough one. To have no expectations of your spouse. Well, Steve, uh, you know, I mean, uh, now hold on a minute. This is a covenant agreement, uh, you know, to we're to stay with one another, we're to love one another, uh, be faithful to one another, not leave one another. You know, are you telling me that I should not have expectations of my spouse? That's a tough one. I'm gonna suggest that this applies to all situations in your life, in my life. Doesn't matter what it is. That's, that's a tough one. If we hang with this, if we, if we push our way through all this and, and we stand by the firm conviction that this deals with all situations at all times, in all circumstances, all trials, all hardships, all as, as in everything, big or small, those big situations, which are obviously, you know, uh, well, they certainly would seem relevant. But how about all the little things? What about the weather? You know, it's it's been hot all across the country here in the United States for the past month or so. Uh, uh, I don't even see any break in the forecast. I don't see them... They're not able to, at least the forecasters are not able to tell us when we're going to to get some break in this. It's, uh, it's awful to have to work in the heat. It's awful for it to be so hot. 
What's wrong with having expectations of uh, in that in that regard? You know, Lord, does it have to? Does it really have to be so hot? I mean. I'm going to direct your attention to Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now, there's a direct verse that says that we are to be careful, anxious for nothing. The text does not say be anxious for some things. It says for nothing. That's the King James. If you looked at the Young's literal translation, which I, I like a lot, it's very accurate to the original text. It says, for nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We have expectations of ourselves all the time as Christians. We expect ourselves to be, act like Christians. We expect ourselves to act like Christians and we expect others who profess to know the Lord to act like Christians. These, they're, it's almost built into our human DNA. You know, we, we must expect, we have to expect certain things. We expect things, certain things from our boss. We expect certain obligations to be met by our, in our business dealings. We expect our, our spouse you know, to be faithful in, in, in their commitment to our relationship. Uh, we expect friends to be faithful as well. It's just, it, it, they're, it is so continuous, so constant, a, a factor in our lives that, that we almost, we just walk on top of it all. We, we live under this umbrella of expectations all the time. All the time. There's there's not a day, there's not an hour that goes by that you don't seem to have some expectation over something. Do expectations have any pl place in our lives? Do they play does it play any a role at all? Well, in fact it does. It does. It kind of reminds me of the, the verse, be ye angry and sin not. This is a command, by the way, you know, be ye. God is commanding you to be angry, but to not sin. Well, what is what is he talking about? The only time any anger is, is allowed in a Christian's life is in regard to sin, as it pertains to sin. Be ye angry. It's a command. God is commanding us to be angry so there's something that we need to be angry about. But anger in general is really not a very good thing in the Christian's life. We do have expectations. We are to have expectations. There is an area in which we are to have expectations, but it's not in the areas in which we like. Sorry to say, okay? You know, our, our expectations lie in... The Word of God. Uh, expectations spell death in our walk with the Lord. Every single time. To have expectations of ourselves or others drives a wedge between us and God. Whereas no expectations leads to life and contentment, godly contentment and gain. Great spiritual gain. Uh, we can't even talk about the subject without talking about human will, which is a very touchy subject. I've done a number of videos on uh, so-called free will. Uh, you, every single Christian on the planet, in my opinion, ought to be on their knees thanking God that they do not have free will. If you had free will, you would be in a whole worse off situation than what you think you might be in now. There is a uh, battle of wills that is constantly raging between the sovereign will of God and your 
puny little human will. We're children. We're God's children. And we're going to, at times, we're going to act like children and we're going to resist God's will and we're going to throw our temper tantrums and, and we all do. If you say you don't, well, you lie. Expectations, folks, is law. If there's any word that's connected or associated with expectations, it's law keeping as a rule of life. And of course, we know that Christ is the end of law for righteousness to everyone who believes. The, the idea of expectations is linked to human will as opposed to the will of God. Now this, this becomes especially important as when it comes to ministry. And we all have a ministry. We've all been given the same ministry. We may not all function in the same capacity, but we all, we are, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are a witness to the world of the love and the grace and the peace and the mercy of God. We're to love our enemies according to Luke chapter 6. Uh, do good to them, lend to them, expecting nothing in return. Expecting nothing in return. Have you ever considered the fact, folks, that no expectations... Well, before I say this, I, I've been asked on numerous occasions you know, to, to, to offer advice, counseling concerning Christian marriages and relationships... And what I've said, and I, and I stand by it to this day, is no expectations, no disappointment. If you want to get disappointed a lot, just have expectations. Have expectations of yourself. Have expectations of your spouse. Have expectations of your brother or sister. Have expectations of those that you preach the gospel to. Well, the idiot should have heard, you know, he should have paid attention. He should have heard. He should have, he should have. These people, they, they ought to, you know, those words, ought to, should have, should have, ought have, ought, ought to have had, had, you know, that kind of stuff. Gets us in trouble every single time. What we're doing, folks, when we do all this is we are absolutely, completely casting aside the supreme, sovereign will of God. That He is sovereign. That we serve and worship, love, worship, serve a sovereign God whose will will be done in heaven and on earth. And it's a clash of wills God's and ours. Happens all the time. And guess what? You're not going to win. Now you can throw a temper tantrum like a terrible two-year-old. You are not going to win in this argument with God. In this battle of the wills. Well, God, you should have done this. Man, God, Lord, why didn't you do this? You... Maybe you, you, you're starting to understand really what I'm driving at here. I mean, how, how serious a thing it really is to even suggest such a thing before God. That He should have done something a different way. Well, I, you just didn't like the way it turned out in your life. Is there one thing that God allows or does in your life that is his ch lives of his children that is bad for his children? No, there's not. Does everything that occur in the life of the Christian, I mean everything, I don't care what it is, and I mean I don't care what it is, does, is there a, is there any room at all for expectations? The only room that I see is, ha is having a, a, an honest, 
fair appreciation and respect for the, the Word of God in whom we have, we, build, we have our trust. We put our trust in God, not in ourselves, not in others. Our trust is in Him. Do we truly believe that all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose? Do we really believe that? I mean, many Christians know the verse. They can quote the verse. But how does that work out in our practical day-to-day -day walk with the Lord? The word expecting has in its very definition the idea of despair. Did you know that? You know, Strong's Concordance. Uh, Apopizo is the word... Uh, Greek word, to despair of. I give up in despair. I hope to receive from uh, or in return. It may be rendered despairing of no one. And it's the only place in which the word occurs. I think it's safe to say that Christians are always having expectations of something. Something from God. Something from ourselves. We... we, we if you're one of those really dedicated, diehard, sort of service-minded Christians, then you know, you're having a lot of expectations of yourself. You hold yourself, your, your performance, to a high standard. If you're not, well, then you, you know, so much, then uh, I think you, you, the despondency goes the other way. You think of all the things that you should be. Well, I should be doing this, and I should be doing that, and I, I should have said that, and I should have went there, and I should have went... What if we didn't have expectations? What if? What if we had none? I mean, what would that say, folks, about us if we didn't have any? Is that, would, would that be a, a bad mark on our report card if we didn't have any expectations at all of, any, of anything? I know it sounds pretty lax. It sounds pretty, uh, I don't know what, how the word is uh, sounds pretty uh, carefree, uh, licentious. What what takes its place? What takes the place of expectations? I'm going to suggest a, a few things here: a solid realization of the supreme sovereign will of God, not our will but God's. I love this quote by Spurgeon. How about an absolute belief, trust in God, as opposed to unbelief? You know, we are to walk by faith, not by sight. If we're walking by sight, aren't we having expectations? How about the wonderful, indescribable love of God? Oh, God... God, if you, if you just, man, if you just, if you really loved me, I wouldn't be going through this. Or, you know, I, I really need this, Lord, and you're not letting me have it. And so I'm having expectations of you, but I'm having the wrong expectations of you here. Of course, uh, uh, maybe I can slip this by you without you realizing it, but, but I'm having the wrong expectations of you here. Maybe you won't see that. How could you love me? Are you really providing for my every need? How about the assured provision of God? Every, do you look at every single circumstance, every trial, every hardship, every, every pain, every bit of suffering, every bad, and I'll put that in quotes, bad thing that happens to you, do you look at that as through the lens of the sovereignty of God and His love for you and His Perfect provision for you at all times. Uh, it's, I think it's the, perp the, the very purpose for suffering in the first place. The reason why we have 
difficulties and hardships and trials is, is they are, they're God designed. They teach us to trust him. Godly contentment, knowing that, that we have all that we need in Christ. The word, that word in the Greek, archeo, to, to suffice, to be sufficient. There's only two references. Uh, one was in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. We just recently looked at it in our verse-by-verse -verse study. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Then there's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, 6 through 8, but brother go, goeth the law with brother and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Read that verse with the idea of expectations in the back of your mind. Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that's your brother. That word defraud, that's apostereo, uh, that's to defraud, deprive of. Uh, to cheat, taking away what rightfully belongs to someone else. You know, Christians are no different than non-believers. They don't, they don't want to be defrauded. They don't want to be cheated. They don't want to be robbed. They don't want to be treated unfairly. They don't want to be criticized. They don't want to be, you know, Christians have expectations. They have them all the time. And, I, and I'm going to suggest to you that, uh, the, you know, people in general tend to not be content with that. But we as Christians should. We are not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. No expectations, no disappointment. It's almost like a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm tempted to almost say it's like a, it's like a magic pill. Folks, if the, a pill that leads to healing and, and comfort from that oppression, from the oppression of ourselves and, and, our, and that unregenerate mind, that fallen mind, that, that self, self mind, selfish mind sinful, old man, old nature way of thinking about things, you know. We, we don't live according to that anymore. You know, we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. There's a mind renewal that's taking place. We're being taught through circumstances uh, to not have expectations, to rest in His solid provision and his perfect love for us and and particularly his sovereign will but we find that so very difficult even as christians that it is just it's a tough one it's a tough one uh, please write me or leave me in the comments leave let me know in the comments if you think that there's any areas in which we should have expectations which uh, because I've, I'm suggesting that we shouldn't. I appreciate hearing back from you. I love you all. I truly do. Uh, stay hydrated. Stay cool. Uh, this uh, heat will pass if you're living in our area. Uh, love you all. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.